Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to day 29 of the Wisdom Challenge. I'm looking forward to this because I can see the title that's written in the Bible and I think this is going to be a really good one. So if you guys don't know what this is all about, check out day one to understand why we're doing this. I really wanted to give you guys an opportunity to see what it's like when I interact with the Bible because realistically God is the foundation of pretty much all of my thoughts as much as I can be and I wanted to give you guys a little snippet or opportunity to be a part of this with me that's why we've been doing this for january and also it's january so it's the start of 2023 we want to start off seeking wisdom over knowledge because wisdom is the application of knowledge there's no point knowing things that you cannot apply and that's why we're going to go to this guy who is in the sky to let us know why we want to seek wisdom over knowledge and yes i made that up on the spot what can I say? So let's get straight into this. We're reading from the Passion Translation. If you don't know what this is about, check out day one, day two, day three, day five and 16 were very good videos. Some of my favorite videos I've made, so check those out. If you guys know what's happening, we're gonna just crack straight on. You guys know there's two things you gotta do before we get into this video. Number one is you guys need to hit the subscribe. If you're feeling the vibe and you wanna join the tribe, I'd appreciate it. And number two, also, just to say, if you guys are watching this, I'm now also on Rumble. Like, please check out the winning team on Rumble. I did make, um, show the post of about all of this on my posts on community, on my community tab on YouTube. So check that out. Um, yeah, these videos are going to be on Rumble as well. If you guys are watching on Rumble, let me know in, your comment, in the comment section if you're watching this video from Rumble. I'd appreciate knowing. Let's get straight into this. So yeah, you guys are going to subscribe and part two... But the most important thing we actually need to do is to ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, please, we invite you into our time in reading the Bible. Would you please give us the wisdom behind the knowledge of the Lord? Let's get straight into this in the Passion Translation, Proverbs 29, verse 1. A stubborn people who repeatedly refuse to accept correction will suddenly be broken and never recover. So very simple, guys. We've seen this continued theme that foolish people are stubborn stubborn and prideful and it always only ever backfires in their own face right a humble a wise person is humble and teachable we've said this time and time again you might be getting sick of it but hopefully you are because that means you will never forget it you know that's me doing my teacher thing going on here verse two everyone rejoices when the lovers of god flourish but the people groan when the wicked rise to power when you love wisdom, your father is overjoyed, but when you associate with prostitutes, you waste your wealth in exchange for disgrace. We see a lot of that today. And just to clarify that, of course, the Bible here is talking about good and wise fathers, not just any old fathers, but also, yeah, you, when you associate with prostitutes, you waste your wealth in exchange for disgrace. That's facts. You're just wasting it. What's the freaking point, mate? Why did you even get involved you're wasting your money and i see a lot of guys do that today when i see how these women are making money on things like only fans and i think guys will complain about modern women just want money and they this and that but i'm like but how much money are you spending on only fans because you're incentivizing a lot of the time women to act in the behaviors that you guys don't really want now i'm not saying that's an excuse i'm not saying that's a reason that that makes everything and that a lot of modern women are doing okay i'm just saying that you're making you're con 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 contributing to the problem by making something that's problematic actually beneficial to the ladies you know what i'm saying something that actually backfires on you anyway because you're going to be disgraced because yeah you might have spent hundreds on only fans but you ain't still got a woman and you, you're still struggling you're still annoyed at ladies and whatnot and what have you you're, you're contributing to the problem but then you're upset at what the situation is and, that, and that's what i don't really get like I said, we all have our, our parts to play in how we create problems in this scenario. I'm not saying us ladies are better. I'm just saying as far as what the actual scriptures are saying, I see where this is going. You know, us ladies, of course, we play into this as well. I talk about this at length on my channel. I talk way more often about what the problem is of what us ladies are doing than what the gentlemen are doing. So I hope if you're a man watching this, instead of freaking out and having a breakdown about what I'm saying, you'll hear me out. And I guess hopefully check out some of my other videos. Anyway, verse 4. A godly leader who values justice is a great strength and example to the people, but the one who sells his influence for money tears down what is right. How much do we know this today, right? Influences just, even just if you think on the most basic level, influences like, um, influences, I hate that phrase, as a lot of influences do. 
promoting stuff they don't even really believe in it does cause destruction guys um verse five flattery can often be used as a trap to hide ulterior motives and take advantage of you yes especially us as ladies can use this tool very well because if you tell a guy a lot of things positive things about him he will be like i'll tell you guys this is a female i don't utilize these tactics because i'm not trying to be a decepticon i'm not trying to be a jezebel but i know in a lot of situations if you tell a guy certain compliments and certain things you're gonna get what you want out of him that's the truth um verse six the wicked always have a trap laid for others but the lovers of god escape as they sing and shout in joyous triumph god's righteous people will pour themselves out for the poor but the ungodly make no attempt to understand or help the needy we can't argue um sorry arrogant cynics love to pick fights but the humble and wise love to pursue peace facts this is why you can't get involved in a lot of conversations with foolish people because they just want to fight a lot of them they're dealing with their demons their wickedness they they need they're like addicts they need that hit of chaos you know and sometimes that can be hard to go against because you feel like you have reasons or justification why you can say what you need to say or why you're justified or whatever when it comes to foolish people like the bible says do not give your pearls before do not give your pearls to swine you just gotta ignore it i think it's give your pearls to swine i can't remember the exact wording of it but it's like, do not, do not waste your pearls on swine, pretty much. Don't waste your wisdom, don't waste your knowledge, don't waste your maturity sometimes on people who don't deserve it. Sometimes just exit conversation, you know what I'm saying? Um, verse 9. There's no use arguing with a fool, for his ranting and raving prevent you from making a case and settling the argument in a calm way. Violent men hate those with integrity, but the lovers of God esteem those who are holy. You can recognize fools by the rage they give, full vent to their rage, and let their words fly. But the wise bite their tongues and hold back all they could say. Yeah, that's what I was just saying. That, you know, guys, and especially with foolish people, I'm going to help some of you guys out there. This is a lesson I had to learn also the hard way. A lot of lessons I've had to learn the hard way, okay? This is why we're on the winning team, because your girl has had to be strong and tough to get here. Sometimes you can have the most truthful, fair, just case against somebody else, right? Here's the problem. If that person is never willing to acknowledge the truth, and you especially experience with narcissistic individuals, it doesn't matter how truthful you are. It doesn't matter how just you are. It doesn't matter how calm you are. There is literally no point in engaging a conversation with this individual. We're talking about foolish people. We're talking about wicked people. We're talking about narcissists and all those types of things. There is no point. You could be 100% correct. A billion percent correct. They will not... It, there is no level of scientific research. There is... You could bring a thousand people. They will never listen and accept your truth as the, the sorry the truth not your truth let's not do this woke nonsense they will never accept the truth as the truth so this is something i've learned the hard way you got to learn that it's okay to like when it comes to foolish people it's okay to lose lose the battle lose that's the only time i'm going to tell you guys to lose on the winning team is lose the battle when it comes to foolish people because they're never going to acknowledge what you're saying all of them will never do it because they're stuck in what what do we connect to foolishness and pride stubbornness they're so stuck in their ways they can't physically like and i've seen it myself so many times they can't physically accept anything else and you just gotta leave them there now they're for the lord and now they're with the lord because whatever you say isn't going to change anything and it's sad but it's true you know what i'm saying i'm just trying to let y'all know what the truth is here um Verse 12, when leaders listen to false accusations, their associates become scoundrels. Poor people and their oppressors have only one thing in common, God made them both. The best insurance for a leader's longevity is to demonstrate justice for the poor. Experiencing many corrections and rebukes will make you wise, but if you left your own eyes, you'll bring dis if you've if left to your own ways, sorry, you'll bring disgrace to your parents. So again, the Bible here is referring to, you know, if you have good wise parents that when you that you would disgrace them you wouldn't want to disgrace people who are stewarding coaching and teaching you in the ways of wisdom 
you know what I'm saying? Obviously, that does not apply to a lot of parents today. That's why I keep hammering that in because I want to acknowledge that because I personally feel from looking at a lot of things I've seen online and from just my own research that a lot of people are not in this scenario and yet are still trying to hold themselves up to some kind of standards of parents who don't even actually give a single crap about being wise. They just want to have slaves or they just want to, they're just taking out their own in internal issues. I pray that the Lord saves us all. I'm not against those parents. I don't wish badly on them. I wish for all of us to receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Saviour. That's my true wish. And for no one to have to deal with anything extreme. Uh, verse 16. When the wicked are in power, lawlessness abounds, but the patient lovers of God will, will one day watch in triumph as their stronghold topples. Correct your child and one day you'll find he has changed and will bring you great delight. I like how it says one day, as in don't expect everything to happen overnight. I think a lot of parents today... A lot, it's also because it's just society and a lot of cultures, a lot of traditional cultures think I have to say something to my child today and tomorrow I have to see this. We do this as humans. We think we have to give somebody help today and tomorrow we're going to see them perfectly execute what we're talking about. That's not real human behavior. A lot of us need, a lot of humans need the time to process. So invest. If you're a parent, you should be, you should see yourself as a long term investor. You may not feel tomorrow like what you did yesterday was worth it. But believe that 10 years from now is going to be worth it. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I think being a parent is actually one of the hardest jobs out there. And why I wish people would stop reducing it to, I put food on your table, I put clothes on your back and a shelter over your head. It's way more than that. It's way more than that. Okay. That's about what all you do for a pet. That's why I think a lot of parents treat their children as pets. Because that's about as much as you do for a pet. For goodness sake. Verse 18, when there is no clear prophetic vision, people quickly wander astray. But when you follow the revelation of the word, heaven's bliss fills your soul. So basically just when we have God's vision, a prophetic vision, an idea of what we should do in the future, it keeps us on track. I believe that. That's why I think for me, I my, my priorities, they don't make sense to a lot of people. But and there's nothing going on in the world that I'm surprised about. That's the funny thing. Like I, I there's a lot of going on. And there's a lot of positives and negatives, but I am never, I have not felt for years the feeling of like, oh my gosh, I'm shocked. Like I was not shocked at the prices went up. I wasn't shocked about Russia going to Ukraine. I was not shocked about the government. I've not been shocked for so long because God's always telling me things ahead of time and as he does to his children. And it just makes me feel better about it because I'm like, anything could be happening, but God already said this, like this is nothing outside of what God said was going to happen. You know, um, so yeah, I definitely appreciate that. Even little things in my own life God tells me about, like little things that you would think, why would God even tell you about that? Like, that's not even important. And I'm like, wow, well, God well, actually told me, he warned me, you know. Um, verse 19, a stubborn servant can be corrected by words alone, for even if he understands, he pays no attention. A, sorry, a stubborn servant can't be corrected by words alone. But even if he understands, he pays no attention. This is, here's the stubbornness and foolishness being connected again. Verse 20. There's only one kind of person who is worse than a fool. Um, the impetuous one who speaks without thinking first. Eesh. If you pamper your servants, don't be surprised when they expect to be treated as sons. The source of strife is found in an angry heart, for sin surrounds the life of a furious man. This is true. I've experienced this from physical men myself as a woman because sometimes, guys, I'll be very honest, there's a reason why I don't date these days. And let me tell you something why. Because I've realised that if you have somebody who has built up anger, even if you are not angry about anything, anything and everything is angering to them. And it's so stupid and annoying. Like, it's really annoying. Like, you could have no built up anger, no upset, and this person will just be freaking out. Like, I had this situation. I'll share because it's the wisdom challenge the situation right there's this dude and we we I, we dated okay I, I i regret all of this now okay we dated and we talked for about two-ish weeks and i say in that time we probably went on about two dates or three dates two dates i packed one date maybe two or, let's say two and um this guy has all this anger about stuff that's just completely misplaced he said stuff like to me like i don't even know what you're doing in your personal life um if you're even like working even though I had literally he had literally been asking me because I'd posted on social media when I was doing my lesson planning like for work because obviously I teach guys I was showing on my social media me making powerpoints and he even asked me 
oh wow like what is this that you're doing this seems like super complicated chemistry i was like yeah this is me i'm doing my my powerpoint seems like then he tries to say oh i've never seen you doing work and he's, he's trying to make all these statements about me of things that he'd actually seen and i'm trying to talk to this guy like so calmly like um but what happened to this thing that happened and that thing that happened like i thought we saw this i thought we did that and i'm a very open-minded person like if i'm talking to somebody if i'm dating i'm always like okay how do you feel about things how do you feel about things are going and you know to give you an opportunity that even if you feel intimidated or it's difficult like just say what you really think right and i realized in a lot of those times he would say nothing but then it would always get to a point where like he would let things build up that he was clearly feeling all along that he never said and then i would say to him but did you ever tell me that that's how you're feeling when i asked you are you okay did you say that no you didn't and now you're freaking out at me and now you're the one shouting i'm talking in the exact same tone i'm talking in this video right now guys so if you guys think i'm the problem just write on the com problem in the comments and i'll take you guys' constructive criticism on board and i'm actually talking like this and then he's like oh no, no, no and i was like and i said to him i was like this is why i don't want to talk to you because i can't deal with people just unnecessarily being angry and i feel like this is what's happening in the bible here he's talking about the source of strife is found in an angry heart for sin surrounds the life of a furious man you're just furious you're not even able to like if i was upset and i had more reason to be upset about a lot of things and i just didn't like there was many times when we were having a conversation and i was just saying my perspective but i would say at least 70 percent of the time you know cut me off and just be going off and saying what he's saying i'm thinking i barely know you and even still i would not raise my voice even still i would just let him speak because i'm like you know what i'm gonna let you speak because i can't bother to be shouting here and that's why when I see these types of scriptures, not only does the first book put me off of dating because these people are older than me and I'm supposed to be the like young, problematic, modern woman. But also, I'm just like, yeah, I can't deal with this. Can't deal with the foolishness. And he's the type of guy who would see himself as a good guy, right? He's got a good job. He makes decent money, whatever. He can look after himself. And I would see him as a good guy in general, in general. But actions wise... You're not, you're not matching up, mate. You know what I mean? Anyway, no one asked for that story time, so let's continue. Verse 23, we're nearly done. Lift yourself up with pride and you will soon be brought low, but a meek and humble spirit will add to your honour. You and your own worst enemy... You are your own worst enemy, sorry, when you partner with a thief, for a curse of guilt will come upon you when you fail to report a crime. Again, this whole thing of don't get involved with people you don't want to be involved with. We talked about this so many times. Fear and intimidation is a trap that holds you back, but when you place your confidence in the Lord, you'll be seated in the high place. Everyone carries favour with leaders, but God is the judge and justice comes from him. The wicked hate those who live a godly life, but the righteous hate injustice wherever it's found. That is key for me personally, because I think in this modern day society that we live in, there's so much of... Um, People will equate legality to goodness and justice. Oh, because you went along with what the law, because you you abandoned the law, because you did something illegal, you are now seen as bad, you are now seen as whatever happens to you is now just. But I would argue that a lot of the worst criminals are the people in places of power, especially legal power, and they get away with things. And God is just looking at this all in a different way. And honestly, personally, I can't wait for God to just step in and absolutely destroy and dismantle so much of what's happening today and just show people that you can fool the world you can fool the majority but you can't fool me and you can't outdo my sense of justice and that's what i look forward to and if something like that sounds scary to you if you if you think i sound psycho guys listen i don't want to see anybody having to suffer but all i know is that if we don't humble ourselves and receive jesus then we will end up in suffering based on the fact that us as humans left our own devices never ends well it never ends well guys and i want to see us all thriving and also i want to see the justice for those who have been mistreated in the world and i believe that god will deliver so you guys let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below don't forget to hit that subscribe if you're in the vibe you want to join the tribe i hope i didn't share too much in this video whenever i share real life stories i always think yeah never upload this video no one needs to know this they're going to judge you they're going to say this but you know what guys i actually don't care right now and i'll tell you why because i'm a real human being i never want to be the youtuber that's on here like i don't care if i've got three subscribers 300 or five thousand billion hundred. <laughs> i sound like a 12 year old i never want to be the youtuber 
who comes on here and tries to pretend that I'm more of a better person than anybody else guys I'm a human being just the same as you I just happen to decide to share my stuff through video some of you share your stuff through comments some of you share your stuff through personal emails and dms I appreciate every single person who reaches out to me I appreciate every single one of you guys' lives everybody who's subscribed and guys and I realize there's people who have my post notifications on and I don't even have my post notifications on I was losing my mind I was literally losing my mind I literally nearly cried because I was like I can't believe people would actually want to listen to my videos like that so thank you guys so much if you guys are watching I swear I mean it on every single thing I say about how much I love you guys I love every single one of you guys feel free to reach out to me usually got my my deets in the description or on the information page on my channel let me know your thoughts in the comment section if you feel comfortable if you do email me by the way guys i will keep everything anonymous unless otherwise stated because i know that i say wild things you might not necessarily want me to be like hi this is so and so who said this of course not feel free i've had plenty of great conversations a lot of you um offline of youtube um, that you guys would never believe were even happening so let me know what you guys think god bless every single one of you because if life's a game then let's play to win and i'll see you in my next one bye, -bye.